Meghan Markle joined Prince Harry at a special New York City event to honor veterans ahead of Veterans Day in the US and Remembrance Day in the UK. And the internet's reaction to her dress was instantaneous and absolutely savage. And since John Rivers is no longer with us, in this video I'm going to explain why this dress did not work as expected. Welcome back my battle language buddies. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas, I'm the battle language guy and it would be great if you join us by just liking this video, subscribing and hitting that bell. Let's get down to it. First of all, I absolutely disapprove and condemn any kind of personal attack on people's build and figure. And I have to say that Megan got the worst part of it in the last 24 hours. And that is just not right. But people think that when you are going to talk about a dress, you also should talk about the person who's wearing it. And I don't think that's true, because you might remember that I talk about Catherine's golden dress and at no point I made any reference to her personally how she wore it. And that's a very important distinction that at the same time has a lot to do with mental health. Because if you get anything from this video is that bodies should not fit dresses but the other way around. Dresses should fit bodies. So the only real rule is that your dress should fit you in a way that enhances what you want to project. In this case, Megan wants to draw attention to herself. That is not bad in itself, but in this case she was attending an event where the real protagonists should be the veterans and their families, so drawing too much attention might not be the best idea. Especially if you are using the most stimulating color that is red. I love red, it's the color of passion, of revolutions, and there's no shortage of amazing red dresses through history. And I think it goes very well on Megan. Again, maybe it was not the best choice for the moment, but there are other reasons why this dress just didn't cut it. And that is lines. And not just any kind of lines, but the lines that the dress draw in space. The lines and shapes of a dress will always be a roadmap for the way we look at the person. Whether it's horizontal lines, vertical lines, or diagonal lines, they're going to guide everyone's eyes over you. That's why I want to point out one of the main problems of this dress, and it's the back. The design of the dress is not letting Megan do what she intends, what she wants. She wants her figure to look more vertical. That is helpful so you can look taller, and that's normal since Harry is way taller than her. And in this case, she's also using her hair high up, so it adds to that taller effect. So there's no doubt that this is what's Megan's intentions. But there are a few problems with the back of the dress that completely derail that. First, there's a full contrast line defined by where the dress ends and her back skin begins. There's an absolute division that makes a horizontal line that cuts her figure bluntly in two areas and creates a stop in the way people perceive her presence. Ideally, you prefer your dress to not have any hard visual stops so the eyes can sweep up and down and emphasize your vertical dimension. The other problem with this is that if the dress doesn't cover your shoulders, you must be aware that you'll be drawing attention to them. And shoulders that attract attention is usually a masculine trait, it's something that makes us men look broad and strong. So shoulders are naturally related to a horizontal or wide dimension. So we not only have a high contrast line with the edge of the dress, but at the same time the uncovered shoulders enhance her horizontal dimension. Maybe if you're a taller woman and your shoulders are not that broad, then you can get away with showing them. But again, the lines of your dress should be mostly vertical. These are the kind of details in which it helps to develop your observation skills and for that you can download my 100 battle language tips right in the description of this video. And that's when we get to the straps. The straps are diagonal, so in some way they help add some verticality to the dress. But the problem is the dimension of the straps. They are really tiny and there's this phenomenon of contrast by just looking at something with a reference. Let me explain. If I show you this rectangle, you are looking at it with no other reference to judge its dimensions. But if I add a second wider rectangle, you might say that the original one is slimmer, right? And if we change the second reference and instead add a very thin rectangle, that perception of the first will change. You'll now say that it's wider. But in the end, it's still the same one. Now what happens with the dress straps? They are very thin, so you're looking at their shape and at the same time you're looking at Megan's back and shoulders. 
So since the straps are so tiny, then her back, her shoulders and her arms are going to be perceived much wider than they really are. Again, those tiny straps are reinforcing the horizontal effect that was not Megan's intention. There are details like the V-shaped cut at the front that were designed with this in mind. Diagonal lines are closely related to vertical lines in the sense that they will help you look taller and slimmer. And that pattern was repeated with the straps at the back, which, as any diagonal line, have this visual effect of separating, like falling to the sides. That falling to the sides draws even more attention to her shoulders and more attention to her horizontal dimension. It doesn't help much the volume of the dress itself with a triangle or bell shape. Some claim that the dress volume was too much over the top and maybe it was for the kind of event that they were attending. But I'm much more concerned about the way it occupies so much field of vision. Now, it's obvious that Megan wanted to draw attention to herself, there's little doubt about that, but the dress she chose was actually drawing attention away from her, so instead of helping her achieve her desired goal, it was subtracting from it. Because one thing is drawing attention and one very different is distracting. And that was one of the main sources of so much vitriol on the internet that I insist I don't support any of it, and I think every single one of us should be better than that. This is why the term fit can be so frustrating, especially for women, because it's not enough that a dress is the correct size and fits your body in a best bespoke way, but at the same time you want the dress to enhance the image that you want to project. And yes, there are women that are not interested at all in looking taller. For example, Carla Bruni. No fashion analysis could be complete without mentioning her shoes, which I think they were okay, save for the color. I think their color was trying to compete with the red of her dress. Shoes of a clearer tone would have helped her legs to look longer, and she already knows it, because that's exactly what she did this time. Notice that the no straps approach looks really good on her. That's the beauty of fashion design, and that's why sometimes designers create a piece with a certain person in mind, but not every woman has the luxury to be an artisan's muse. As always, it helps a lot if you learn to identify these codes of perception that are the same, no matter if you're looking at a dress or a cathedral or a photograph. But the essence is to be comfortable with your own body, and realize that we are all different and we are going to feel under pressure sometimes. I mean, I'd like to have Ryan Reynolds abs, but at the same time I love English breakfast, so it is what it is. Just make sure you dedicate some time to reflect on the current state of the flesh temple that you live in. It will be well invested time. If you want to support my channel and help me make more videos, all you have to do is like, subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss any of my battle language analysis and tips. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas and I'll see you soon, my battle language buddy.